All right, right now, who can tell me something you know about enzymes? It's a catalyst. Ooh, it's a catalyst. All right, uh, catalyst. It's a protein. All right, what? A, oh, globular. Chemical reactions. What? Oh, you yeah. got yeah. active sites. 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 Ooh! <laughs> Alright, collisions to have the reaction. Temperature pH. Dang, you need to sit up here. Oh, I was going to say something. Hold on, you need to sit here. Temperature pH. They just all kind of move around until they bond together. Most of them. You guys have questions? Question? Is that your question? Okay. I just wanted you guys to have a conversation. I didn't know if you had a question because I'm trying to get over through enzymes. All right, uh, so this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, you uh, very, very simple. Um, so, what are enzymes? Protein catalysts that speed up chemical reactions. All right, that's, we, we kind of understood that. You already told me that, which is great. You already told me that. Protein catalysts. So, I always like to ask the question. Where do enzymes come from? All right, let's say enzyme is at the top of the food chain. So we have enzyme right here. What makes up enzymes? Proteins. Proteins, all right. What makes up proteins? Amino acids. Amino acids. All right. How do we, okay, so then I can put, I'll put it in here. I'll put a little bit of, I'll put a little polypeptide in here. In between, yeah, is that all right? All right, pipe up. What makes up amino acids? How do we make amino acids? Bases, like sugar things, nitrogenous bases, DNA, mRNA. <laughs> What's the process to make these proteins? And so we kind of have to do some tra translation. What comes before translation? Uh huh. What comes before transcription? All right. So DNA. All right. And then, of course, we're going to have mRNA here, all right? Okay, so all these things that you learned about already are making up the granddaddy of all enzymes. So we're going to talk about what these enzymes do. So kind of keep, okay, so everything ultimately starts from the DNA. We're going to make enzymes. Okay, uh, living organisms are going to depend on many of these chemical reactions in order to live this over here, all right? Uh, most chemical reactions in a cell take too long to complete on their own. A catalyst is needed to speed up a chemical reaction. So again, I always like to draw this graph one more time just for whatever. So here is, here is my normal chemical reaction, all right? So if I am going to put a line here where this starts, I know it doesn't really work well. This is my activation energy. All right, this is my normal reactant, my normal reaction. All right, that we represent as EA, activation energy. Now, so this is a reaction without an enzyme. RXN without 
enzyme. Have we ever seen this before? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now if I put an enzyme in there, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to this graph? What is gonna go down? All right, so here it is. So here, and then boom. So now my activation energy is much smaller. I lowered it. All right, activation energy, and I can get through the process a lot faster. If this generates energy, 200 kilojoules of energy, it's still going to generate the same amount of energy. Or if it loses energy, it's still going to generate the same. It just means that the activation energy is smaller to get to the final product. So over here, I would have this side just so we understand this. My reactants. Over here, I would have my products. All right? Reactants and products. So when the enzyme reacts on it, I'm either forming something that I'm putting something together or I'm ripping something apart with an enzyme. That's basically what we're looking at there. And so again, let's gonna speed it up. If I wanted to run up that hill, and I'd run hills for my team, I would probably want to run the blue hill, not the red hill. Correct? What do you think? Yeah. I'd do 20 hills. For the red, unless I'm Walter Payton or the, the GC men's basketball team or, or boys basketball team, uh, then maybe uh, I would uh, be running the red hill. But, all right. All right, properties of enzymes. All right. Again, they're going to act as a catalyst, increase the speed of a chemical reaction without being consumed itself. All right, so I like to say this word, which... I think you think enzymes are pretty easy. I hope you do because they are. Reusable. Reusable. All right, reusable. All right, they don't get destroyed. All right. We already talked about on the previous slide how they lower activation energy. It's going to ask you to draw it on the back so you can copy it over if you already copied mine down on um, one of the pages later. Um, enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. An example of a large quaternary protein, right? A quaternary uh, protein, not an enzyme, would be hemoglobin. All right, where do we find that? All right, in your blood. So that hemoglobin, all right, is a very large ends, uh, very large protein, not an enzyme. Typically, very large proteins are enzymes. There's an example of one that's not. Um, so just make sure you understand that. Reuse, not altered at the end of the reaction. Have optimal reactions based on temperature, pH, and substrate. So that comes to my graph here. Here we go. I'm gonna do two. Right, I want you to add two to your paper. All right. So I'm gonna do one here. Concentration. And you're going to take a second to see if you can come up with a, what it's going to look like. Um, and this is going to be enzyme activity. I'll just say enzyme activity, activity here. And this is going to be pH and temperature on this one. pH and temperature on this one. And I'm not giving it a, a value, but I want you to show me what you and your neighbor think will happen to the graph, all right? There's only one line on each graph. Talk to your neighbor. Nope. One minute. Yep. One minute. There are two different ones. Yeah. All right. Who has one for the first one? Uh, often, or what do you got? What do you think? What is it going to look like? I kind of like a bell curve. All right. Anybody else agree with that? Disagree? All right. So it's kind of going to be like this. All right. It's going to come up, and then it's going to kind of come down. All right. Right here, we call optimal 
temp or pH? What is your optimal temperature in your body? So 37 Celsius. So beyond that, it's not going to function. Below that, it's not going to function as well. What about the one for concentration? Yes? It's going to go like this and go down. Okay, so we have somebody going down. Anybody else? Anybody have anything different? Yes? All right, so I think Lauda has it here. So it's going to come up and then it's going to go over. So let's understand this why. So if my, let's say this was zero, this was 200. So I had 200 things I could react with, but I can only react with 120. So at that point, I'm going to have 120 reactions total. And I'm going to keep doing that all the time because I have no more what? What do I have no more of? Enzymes. All right, my enzymes are maxed out. Every active site, every binding site is taken up. So I can only perform 100, but it's going to max out, it's going to plateau. I'm going to do maximum rate the whole time. So let's say 120, 200, I had 200, but I can't do any more reactions than 120 because I have no more enzymes. That's what we're talking about for the last bullet point. Okay? All right. Uh, enzyme shape. All right, now, this is going to be, this is going to blow your mind a little bit right now. All right? So, a student sitting in a class in 19, I think, 64, 65, saw his teacher kind of draw this and said that this was an enzyme. And then the teacher drew this and said, this is my substrate coming in. And that person later became a multi-millionaire. What do you think they invented? Pac-Man and eventually Ms. Pac-Man. All right? So just sitting in class, he looked at it. The teacher said this, drew a little simple picture like this. The substrate's going to come in and bind here on the active site. And then what happens is in order to lower activation energy, all right, let's see, it's going to do this. All right, it's going to be weird. All right, so I'm going to draw, oops, draw this. All right, draw this. My little pellet is going to go in here. All right, it's going to reshape, close. This reshaping, all right, lowers activation energy, EA, and then we're going to have the reaction occur. And this student proceeded to invent a huge industry of Pac-Man, and then Ms. Pac-Man, and all the, the cartoons and everything that came later. All right. So, yeah, you should thank this teacher. So, that is what you can remember. So, we have Pac-Man coming along, eats the pellet, closes it, opens back up, goes to the next pellet, closes. Next, what do they call them? I think they're pellets, I don't know what they're called. No, not, not, no, in the video game, I don't know what they're called. Oh. These are substrates here, yes. All right, uh, the shape of each enzyme is different, giving each enzyme a specific ability to catalyze only one specific reaction. All right, so this is what we talk about that Lock and key, all right? I used to give one half of the room a bunch of locks, the other half of the room a bunch of keys. You have to find the key that opens up a certain lock. Because I don't think it's really it's pertinent for a hotter level. We, we didn't say we do a lab that's a little bit higher. Or we actually measure reaction rate. <laughs> Oh, the lock and key thing would be a lot better. All right, so the point is only one key on that side of the room will open up one lock on this side of the room and vice versa. That's the same thing with a uh, enzyme. All right, so we have the active site, which I labeled, and it's going to bind to start the reaction. All right, the lock and key hypothesis, 
the enzyme's active site and the key right, uh, is the substrate. Okay, so let's just, uh, all right, so the key, here are my substrates. All right, um, this is my lock over here, so label it on your picture. And what happens here is what type of reaction do we have going on here? What type of reaction? We got two things, all right? They're combining, changing shape, and forming one thing. What type of reaction is that? Take two things and form one. Condensation reaction. Now, if I went backwards and I went this way with everything, what type of reaction would it be? Where I took one and made it to two? Hydrolysis. All right, if backwards, sorry. Okay, so uh, when they combine uh, an enzyme substrate complex forms, this is the enzyme substrate. All right, pretty easy, right? I don't, I don't think you see anything too hard. Breaking the substrate down into the products and leaving the original enzyme. Hence, uh, these are reusable. All right, reusable. Pretty easy. I want to make sure you have some time to get that homework cooking because a lot of people finished it last period. We'll see what we can do. All right, enzymes are gonna lower that activation energy. You need to start a chemical reaction. Um, Compost when the substrate binds to it. We just talked about how Pac-Man closes its mouth around the pellet. Um, induced fit occurs when the enzyme twists or bends around the substrate, lowering the activation energy. Induced fit, all right? Nothing more I can really talk about that. All right? Induced fit. What type of reaction is that going to be? That you see on the board. The reaction. Oh. Yeah, chemical. No. Condensation. All right. It takes one. It has two things. It's going to make one. Condensation. All right, condensation reaction. Okay, All right, at least you're getting that. Okay, so now we got this guy here. Um, notice the shape of the substrate is specific for the active site. And we have our substrate. And now all of a sudden we have it splitting into two. What are we gonna have for this one? Hydrolysis. hydrolysis. Okay, we have hydrolysis coming in. Of which we need a recommendation. Yes. Ten of which we need a recommendation. Yes. Only one went through. So email Who went through? I don't know. One of them. Just, just do type them up and send them to Shannon. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is a hydrolysis. All right. This is a hydrolysis. Because we're going to break up into two. What do we need on this? What do you need for hydrolysis? Water. All right. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, now we gotta talk about catabolic. Anabolic, maybe, maybe not. Oh, okay. ES substrate and then your product. So enzyme substrate complex. It's, it's not right. Okay. Products. All right, so what type of reaction is this on the board? So I have sucrase plus sucrose with water, forms glucose, fructose, and sucrase. I heard it. 
Hydrolysis, adding water to break apart. Hydrolysis is enzyme catalyzed, as you can see in this lovely picture. All right, so my, su my substrate here is going to be sucrose. All right, so this is my substrate, which is sucrose, which is like C12, C12H22O11. All right, and then it's going to break up into this six carbon glucose and this five carbon fructose. All right, so products are going to be released. We're going to add water, which means hydrolysis. All right, convert it into products. All right, then the active sites are ready to go. All right, this one. Is it anabolic or catabolic? All right, so the first one, if it's C, put C up. If it's A, put A up. First one, anabolic or catabolic? C is like this for cookie. A is like this. C is for cookie. Or A, you got to pick. You cannot not pick. I'm talking about the one on the left. Look, you got to put a C or an A up. All right, a C. Now, Pac-Man on your neighbor. Pac-Man on your neighbor. Pac-Man on your neighbor. Get him. Get him. Pac-Man on your neighbor. All right. All right, the first one is catabolic. All right, now the second one, is it anabolic or catabolic? A or C? A or C. Now, if you make an A, go ahead and try to destroy your neighbor's A. Go ahead, come on. Destroy your neighbor's A with your A. See whose A is stronger. Take it down. Take it down. Oh, weak. Oh, weak. All, weak. All right. Bonds are formed anabolic. Anabolic. Bonds are formed. All right. How do enzymes lower activation energy? Ah, look, we have this wonderful graph that we've seen a lot. All right, already. Okay. Um, and yeah, by the way, change this. I don't know what those changes. This is EA. Let's be a chemist. Oh. All right, you can even see it right here. Uncatalyzed, we got some Gibbs free energy, delta G, uh, that you see there. Uh, enzymes required to destabilize it, uh, existing chemical bonds in the substrate of the catalyzed reaction. All right, we're gonna lower that. They do not change the energy of the reactants or products. Remember, I told you that earlier. All right, so make sure that you star this area. They're not going to change the energy. If you start with two, if you're making 200 kilojoules of energy, you're going to have 200 kilojoules of energy. It doesn't change what you're going to create. And remember, if you drew this graph earlier, draw it in that space. All right? If you didn't, if you drew it earlier somewhere else, just say it's on page one. I don't know, something like that. Which graph? one is here. The one I've drawn in this class now, I think, seven times. Seven. Seven. I've drawn that enzyme graph with the catalyzed versus uncatalyzed reaction. Enzymes are very, very easy thing to do. I am. I'm going to go ahead and play this video in a second because. It will really apply to you come tomorrow. Uh -oh. This will apply to you tomorrow. Oh. All right, let's take a look, and this will be up after the. Making a snack.
snowman is always a big ball of fun. Three snowballs full of fun, to be exact. And each snowball starts out small, getting bigger as you roll it in white fluffiness. Let's imagine that you go outside in a fresh snowfall to build one of these guys, but you don't have the best suited yard for rolling snowballs. In fact, your backyard is one giant hill. This hill is fantastic for sledding, but not so much for making snowmen. Anyways, in order to make a giant snowball for the snowman's bottom, you'll need to actually push the snowball up over the hill and then down the other side. You do it because it's fun. But make no mistake, it takes a lot of energy to get started up this hill, and this is hard work. Right now, you share a quintessential problem with some chemical reactions within a cell. These chemical reactions might be a lot of fun when you're in a cell, but it takes a lot of energy to get them started. This is called the activation energy, or the energy required for a reaction to start. You can think of activation energy as that energy you needed to muster up in order to push that snowball up and over the hill in your backyard in order to maximize the size of your snowball and get it to the other side. What your cells have to help overcome a problem of high activation energy are called enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that lower the activation energy of a reaction. In doing this, enzymes increase the rate of a reaction, helping it to occur faster. However, enzymes are not consumed in a reaction, they simply help it to occur. They do not add snow to your snowball, they just make it easier to make a snowball. This makes enzymes reaction catalysts. The presence of enzymes is analogous to decreasing the size of your hill in your backyard. Enzymes make things easier for your cell and help chemical reactions occur. There are hundreds of different kinds of enzymes in your cells, which all participate in different types of reactions. Enzymes can break molecules apart, build or add molecules, and even rearrange them. In lowering the activation energy of a reaction, enzymes decrease the barrier to starting a reaction. It's important to know, however, that the change in energy remains the same between the start and end of a chemical reaction. For example, if a reaction released 200 kilojoules of energy without an enzyme, the same reaction would still release 200 kilojoules of energy with some enzymatic aid. The difference would only be a lower activation energy and a faster rate of reaction. In other words, if enzymes were helping you build a snowman, you'd be done quicker, but you'd have just as much fun. There you go. Okay. Uh, Making a snowman okay. is always a big ball of fun. All right, so let's talk a little bit about optimal reactions in temperature. All right. So we talked about earlier, we drew a little graph. All right, we drew a little graph on temperature. So at this point, extremely low temperatures cause reactions to slow down due to a decrease in kinetic energy. So remember, you get collisions, all right? How, when your things are colliding, the slower it is, all right? The slower the molecules are moving, all right? Lower moving molecules, all right? Slower moving molecules can't collide with enough force for the reaction to occur. Um, and they're not gonna collide as frequently. As frequently. Um, they win warmer temperatures. Extremely high temperatures can cause uh, damage by denaturation. So denaturing an enzyme means all those disulfide bridges, those hydrogen bonds, covalent bonds, those things are broken. You can't put them back together, all right? The biggest thing you can do is if you get a fever, put somebody in an ice bath, and hopefully you can still control the enzymes that haven't denatured, and maybe form some new ones to keep you alive. The 3D shape enzyme protein loses, the tertiary quaternary structure cannot catalyze reactions. It can no longer fit the pellet in the Pac-Man's mouth. The mouth is kind of jerry-rigged and kind of like my cousins up in West Virginia. They got some summer tea. So they're not eating apples too well either. You know, summer tea, some are here, some are there. So they really don't like uh, the old, uh, you know, red delicious apples or anything like that. All right. Okay, uh, so when it denatures, it's going to totally change the shape. It's going to become like a, a nice big worm. Bunch of worms here. 
Um, sometimes permanent, sometimes it is temporary. So originally, we have our little pellet coming in right here. We're gonna have it kind of smush on top of it, and then it's gonna be reused, gonna pop it out. It's gonna break this up into two pieces, all right? Maybe something like that. When it does that, there is no place for it to take up the substrate. It can't fit anywhere, it doesn't work. Okay, that's the nature. Pretty simple. All right. Uh, the effects of temperature on enzyme activity. You guys already predicted this. You already told me this, which is great. All right. So it's asking you to add a couple notes to that page. I don't know if you can see it or read it, but it's asking you to add and label certain things. What's it asking you to label? Label the graph with the following information. Optimal temperature. All right, so find a line where the peak is the highest. That's what we call optimal temperature. In this case, it's going to be 40 degrees Celsius. All right, so the first thing is optimal temperature. And that equals the highest peak. Highest peak, which equals 40 degrees Celsius. All right. Next, as temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases. This is what type of correlation? Positive correlation. So as we're raising up that temperature, we're going from a stiff thing in the morgue and we're trying to create Frankenstein back to life. We have a positive correlation. Once we get up to the upper temperature, enzyme loses 3D shape. We're going to denature over here. And we can't recognize the substrate. All right? So those things you have to be able to identify from that graph. All right? At this point, I want you to try the questions on the next uh, the next thing right